You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's June 17th. And, well, a big beatdown in Bitcoin. It had hit 65,500. That was its peak intermediate, perhaps, but that was its peak. Now it's trading down around 39,000. You've seen a big smackdown in gold over the past two, three days, seemingly inexplicable. It's below $1,800 now for the first time in several months, at the same time that many of you out there, including myself, were expecting it to go higher. But don't forget, it's a quadruple witching hour options expiration. What's your thought? Is the decline in, are the declines in cryptos and gold, silver, are they permanent? Or is this just a flash in the pan? Send us an email to kl at com. Well, right now we got somebody in here who knows a lot about crypto. He's involved with a cryptocurrency called Stealth, uh, Dr. James Stroud. James, it's great to have you on the show. So tell us, uh, crypto's gotten slammed, including your own. Uh, is this just temporary here or... Are we looking at uh, part of a broader trend? I think we're still um, on an uptrend right now for Bitcoin. Um, the uh, it does it it does look uh, bad to, uh, probably to a lot of new people. Um, these types of swings are very typical for a, for an extended bull market. I'm a believer in the in the macro cycle um, or the super cycle as it's, as it's often called. And that's where Bitcoin follows a cycle about every four years related to its having. Um, the having is uh, it, it, having the Bitcoin emissions right now. The inflation rate for Bitcoin is kind of low. It's like two point something percent per year, which and every four years that drops by about half. And uh, the cycle seems to follow the price cycle seems to follow that that inflation uh, model and that's called the stock to flow and we're we're right in the middle of the bull season if if you ascribe to that and I think that's where we are because Bitcoin's pretty much followed previous cycles programmatically and a lot of times you see a big pull light back like this at this part of the cycle and people look for reasons you know Elon t Elon tweeted something negative or positive but I think it's just following that cycle. And uh, and it it is is correlated to some extent with other assets like gold and silver. So, um, you know, you can you it seems like these larger uh, aspects of the economy weigh on the Bitcoin price and they do. But those are just superposed on the larger trend right now, which is going up probably uh, through the rest of this year, almost till the late part of the year. All right. So when we're talking about cryptos, to me, one of the biggest failings of cryptos, of Bitcoin in particular, is that if you had a wallet, you didn't use an exchange and you forgot your key and you upgraded your computer, you're kind of screwed. Uh, there's no way to recover that key and that Bitcoin is lost for forever. And supposedly upwards of 25% of all the Bitcoins ever issued or Bitcoin ever issued is kind of in that never, never land, never to be reclaimed again. Is there a way to get that back? Uh, if you lose your phrase and you ha are truly the sole custodian of your coins, uh, yeah, you're not getting them back ever. It's designed that way. Uh, this, the, this kind of concern, it is a concern. And, um, when people set up their own wallets, they really need to be careful if they're going to put any kind of money into a cryptocurrency wallet and, and are custodian of their own funds. But these stories uh, have become part of the lore because a long time ago, Bitcoin was worth less than a cent. 
you know, and it was worth a dollar. And somebody might give you five bitcoins when it was a dollar, and you're like, okay, I'll set up a wallet. I'm going to put that passphrase somewhere. I mean, if I gave you a coupon for, you know, Shakey's Pizza for five dollars, you'd put it in a drawer. Oh, I'll go there one day, and then. You come back and 10 years later, oh, that's worth $300,000. You still got that coupon. You're probably not going to find it. Um, and so this is kind of how those play out. But the numbers are so huge that they make the news when people relate these stories. And really, it's not an extraordinary story of somebody screwing up and forgetting their money. It's just an extraordinary story of an asset going up so much and price that people could not have predicted it. And some of those people include people who wrote down their, their seed phrases and put them in drawers and cleaned out the drawers one day. But these days, that's much less of a concern. First of all, people know this price history. They're much more aware of what they're doing. Um, if you set up a wallet, there's, a, there's many alerts that says save this phrase. People know that the price can go up, that one day it will be valuable. And also a lot of people use uh, places like Coinbase, which uh, say what you will about, say, their customer support. They will keep your money safe. Uh, I have some Bitcoin in a Coinbase account for a company I have with somebody else, and the company's kind of uh, been a little bit of a zombie, and um, the, it's on Coinbase. I'm not one to keep uh, coins on an exchange, but here, since it's joint ownership company, the coins have just been sitting there since 2015, and I've never, every time I log in, the coin's right there. So... Yes, it, it's uh, these days it's not really a concern, and the custodianship of uh, the larger institutions is very well worked out. And Bitcoin has some features to make sure that that these coins can be safe in the long term. All right, so you're bullish about it, but look, last time, and I happen to have written an article about it right when it happened, and interestingly enough, the last major decline. In Bitcoin was 2017. It occurred a week or two before the North American Bitcoin conference in Miami. And just uh, two weeks ago, we had another major Bitcoin conference in Miami 2021. And it's kind of a replay almost of the same exact thing. When you look at the numbers and you see how much it lost in 17, it lost 85% of its value. If it loses 85% of its value this time, uh, that's going to bring it uh, down substantially. I mean, if we look, uh, it could be down to $13,000 uh, if it if it loses 85% this time. And let's face it, that is possible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with cryptocurrency. Anything is possible with traditional investors. That Those kind of thoughts are intensely disturbing, I guess. For cryptocurrency people, as you mentioned, this, these types of swings are part of the price history, and we kind of shrug them off. But uh, yeah, it's possible. I don't, and I think that is definitely uh, going to happen in the future, but I don't think 60000 is the price point from which it's going to make that 85% drop. And 85% is a magic number on, on Bitcoin for some reason. When it hits those really big highs, you see an 85%. It's, it usually corrects 85%, but I don't believe 60,000 is that high. Of course, I could be wrong, um, but, uh, but probably you know the, the price it'll fall back to is going to uh, be a, a little bit higher than 13,000 for this uh, I, I think it's probably in the 17 to 20,000 range and look the one thing is that uh, people into cryptos uh, and I'm not saying you are by any stretch and I'm into cryptos too I've got small positions in five or six different ones but it's almost like a cultish following here, James, where they believe that for some reason they just can't see that Bitcoin can actually go down, even though it has seven times in the past and is doing so now. They just cannot get it through their heads that it could go down. And as a result, it's a missed opportunity because if you get out at the high, which I call it 65.5 at the high because it mirrored the 2017 
chart. It was actually worse than the 2017 chart uh, in many ways. I called it as the top. So if you got out and uh, you, you sold half your Bitcoin, let's say, because you don't have to sell all of it, you sell half of it or a portion, and then you wait for the inevitable decline, and then you go back in and buy it. If you did that in uh, 2017, it, you could have made millions of dollars. Unfortunately, I didn't because my target price was 2200 It never quite hit that low. I was figuring a 90% decline. This time, I'll settle for an 80% decline. But the issue is, and I think isn't so much uh, that it can go down that far, it's that people don't want to believe that it can go down that far because cryptos are special, and they're not. They're just a market, right? Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Oh, yeah. Crypto is, a is. I guess they're not special that they're a market. They're special in that they do have uh, this type of price volatility. Um, so, but yeah, they're just a commodity like anything else. Um, the technology is special. I'm a, I believe in, in, uh, in, a, in a lot of that crypto is very, very cool. But when it comes down to trading, you have to be a realist and you have to understand that, that the price is going to move a lot in either direction. Um, there are cultists um, out there with Bitcoin, and they come in all varieties. There's probably the price cultists, or there's the technology cultists. But, um, and, but as you mentioned, you know, it's so hard to swing trade. One thing, um, one type of thing that has pervaded the culture that um, probably looks a lot like a cult is if you just keep accumulating Bitcoin, you're going to do great over time. And say what you will, but this strategy has really worked. Uh, if you got into it like I did, say, in 2013, and, and you bought it, uh, eight, eight, I remember the price I bought of my first Bitcoin, $866. Um, I tried to trade it, you know, swing trading, and, and of course I traded it all away pretty quickly, but just imagine if I just held on to that, right? Through the dips, it went down to $150. Oh my gosh. Wow. So low. That's terrible. But then it went up to $60,000. So, you know, if you, if you accumulate the, the philosophy is if you accumulate, you stack sats, it's going to keep going up. And that's the, that's the, that's what most Bitcoin believers believe in. They know it's going to go up and down, but they just want to keep accumulating it. And they're, they're kind of, they've been right so far. It doesn't mean they'll be right in the future, but they've been right so far. Um, so yes and yes, uh, it's, it's special, but it's not. And there's a cult, but the cult does have some rational, um, aspects to it. If you, if you look at the Bitcoin price history. Yeah, but to think that it's not, that it's special and isn't a market and subject to market forces, I think is real naive. Now, the, what you're talking about is investment horizon, and that's a different issue. But to think that it can't go down 80% from uh, 65.5 is kind of naive. So let's talk about Stealth, your crypto. Uh, what is its unique uh, properties that make it, uh, you know, make it worthwhile noting? And uh, just tell us how you came up with it. Yeah, so I launched Stealth in 2014. I'm the original dev. Uh, I was always into uh, cryptography, strangely enough, um, just as a fascination, the math and, and different aspects of it. Um, and one thing I, I really thought that would be important for cryptocurrencies one day, I still think 
it's going to be important is privacy. So I wanted a coin that embodied all that, and I didn't really like any of the options out there. So I launched Stealth with the hope of um, adding privacy features to it, and it was basically a Bitcoin clone at the time. Over the years, um, exchanges have been more hostile to privacy coins. Uh, Bitrex, which is a leading U.S. exchange, has delisted Dash, which is a privacy coin, Zcash, which is a privacy coin, and uh, and another one that's not coming to my mind right now, Monero, which is a privacy coin. Uh, and so um, I've hesitated to put privacy features in there, but what we've done recently is address some of these issues that were noted by Elon Musk. It's been noted by the World Bank here recently in their dealings with El Salvador. And that's uh, Bitcoin is... is um, wasteful of energy. I don't think that's such a huge problem, but it's a, it's sort of an appearances problem. Um, so, and then there's also the fact that Bitcoin transaction times are, are slow and erratic. They're 10 minutes, but they can be two days for some people, some transactions. And then also, uh, Bitcoin transactions are expensive. They're, they're like 20, dollars or $25 sometimes. I think the cycle when it was 60 at the top, they had gotten close to $50. How are you going to, wow. uh, it's crazy. Um, so anyway, how are you going to use a cryptocurrency like that, except for um, just, you know, quote, digital gold. Um, so what we, what I've done over the past few years, it's been about three years of work is I've made a, a cryptocurrency that I, I feel like is ideal that's based on Bitcoin, has a lot of its useful features, but it's uh, it has five-second transaction confirmations. So you, you send somebody some stealth, and five seconds later, it's in their wallet, and they can spend it. The second thing, uh, it, the, the second aspect that stealth has is that it is um, energy efficient, and then um, the third is we I added a fee-less transactions, which is like it seems easy, but it's not. Uh, what a fee-less transaction is, it's not a free transaction, but it's a transaction where you don't have to use a money fee. You can let your computer do some work as an anti-spam prevention. It sits there and does about one second worth of computational work. You actually have to wait on it to make a transaction. One second later, then tr the transaction is ready. But what that second of work does, it's provable work, cryptographically provable, um, which is a deep topic, but it, it you can prove your computer actually spent a second on this. You can attach it like a coupon to a transaction. You don't have to pay a fee. And from accounting perspective uh, and just a usability perspective, this, this is a huge deal um and it's not a long time to wait for one second and uh and so these are the properties that stealth has that bitcoin doesn't have and probably will never have and what was interesting is recently after we had all this rolled up and it was uh on mainnet getting ready to go live and useful uh elon musk had to write some tweets you know what is the perfect cryptocurrency well, it would be feeless, the latency would be super low, and it wouldn't use any energy. And lo and behold, I mean, we had just re not invented it or started to work on it or anything. I mean, it had been the culmination of three years of work. So um, yeah. that's how stealth stealth is. I mean, it's a, it's a really good uh, technologically speaking coin. That said, you know, I'm, I'm not here to tell people to buy it just in case that topic comes up. Um, I, I do things uh, that, you know, I do things that I want to see. I want to see a coin like this. So I make a coin like this. That's just how I work. Um, if somebody wants to buy it, you know, if, you, if they buy it, it might go up and it might go down, you know. And when people say, should I buy it? I go, oh, yeah, I buy it. It's probably going to go down. Um, so, but, uh, but it's a, it's technologically, I think it's a very good coin and maybe it'll become useful. I hope it, I hope it does for my own sake. And then one of these days, uh, you know, we're going to put privacy on it when we understand the regulatory environment or whenever decentralized exchanges become a lot more useful than they are now, they're really actually getting there. Um, but that's stealth in a nutshell right there. It's fast, feeless. And scalable, and one day I think it's going to be private whenever the conditions are right. All right. Well, that's really interesting. So if you want more information, you go over to Stealth, S-T-E-A-L-T-H, 
org, and you can find out more about it there. James, it's been great having you on. Really appreciate your taking time to explain the crypto market to many of you out there who don't understand it, as well as uh, stealth and uh, its purpose and potential applications in the future. Uh, you said it, uh, if I could just briefly state, that it was up to 20 cents with the recent decline in Bitcoin. It's now down to 10 cents. Uh, what has been its high throughout the uh, course of its existence? Uh, wow. Um, yeah, I actually, I'm, I don't swing trade my own coin, but if I can remember correctly, maybe it's gone up to 40 or 50 cents back in 2018. Really? Um, maybe higher. I just can't remember because I just okay. did, never made it a note of those prices, but it was significantly higher than it is now. Not a problem. All right. So, hey, stealth.org. And if you got any questions for James, send us an email to kl at terrylutz.com. We'll forward it off to him. And don't forget to sign up for your free newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. James, pleasure. Thanks so much for stopping by. You're very welcome. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.